Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books, and I've been covering Disney very closely these last several months. Well, Bob Iger is not Steve Jobs. You wouldn't think that I would need to tell you that. I'm sure you already know that. But recently, Bob Iger was interviewed by Time Magazine as one of the most 100 influential people. And he actually made reference to himself about being in a similar situation to Steve Jobs. Technically, it's true. Steve Jobs did leave Apple and then came back. Bob Iger did leave Disney as CEO and then came back. But to say there's any kind of similarity is absolutely ridiculous. This is coming from from Business Insider, Disney CEO Bob Iger says his return to the company was inspired by Steve Jobs' Apple homecoming and comebacks need unbelievable enthusiasm. Let's get into this article to try to understand what Bob Iger might be thinking he is and what he's capable of doing. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate you guys. Bob Iger returned to the helm of Disney last November, less than a year after he retired. He told Time Magazine he's looking to Steve Jobs Bob's Apple homecoming for inspiration. Iger said such comebacks need incredible resolve, incredible zeal, and incredible energy. Iger became the company's CEO from 2005 to 2020 when he handed over the reins to Bob Chapek. Bob Chapek was his hand-picked successor. That was Bob Iger's responsibility. Bob Chapek really was a terrible choice for a lot of reasons. For one reason or another, Bob Chapek was never prepared to deal with the public or to deal with investors or to deal with his employees on any level in any possible way. Every time Bob Chapek did or said something, it was always taken the wrong way. For example, when Bob Chapek said, well, you know, after a long day, if you're gonna watch Disney+, Plus, you might want to, if you're an adult, not watch animation. The way he said it came out as if he was saying adults don't want to watch animation. It's not what he meant. He meant they might want something that's more mature themed than typical Disney animated film. It's a reasonable statement. It's a reasonable idea. Every time he would say something though, it would come out in the worst possible light. Everything was an uproar with him. The transition set up by Bob Iger with Bob Chapin was an unstable transition amid tensions between the two, insiders Claire Atkinson reported. But he returned to the role last November, two weeks after a dismal earnings report that saw Disney stock tank 13% in a single day to reach a 52-week low. Steve Jobs saw a similar comeback to Apple in 1997, 12 years, and that's 12 years, not 12 months like Bob Iger, 12 years after his acrimonious exit, and resurrected the company from the brink of bankruptcy. And of course, Apple is a huge success now. The market value of Apple is $2.6 trillion if you were to buy all of the stock on the open market. That is a huge success. That is because of Steve Jobs, but Steve Jobs and Bob Iger, completely two different types of people. In the Time interview published Thursday, Iger said he was looking at what the Apple co-founder did for inspiration. He described Jobs as the person that I think most of that I was fortunate enough to have observed very closely. Because it is true, Bob Iger was friends with Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs and Bob Iger knew each other, supposedly according to Bob Iger. Steve Jobs liked Bob Iger, but that doesn't put the two of them anywhere near in the same league in terms of their skills. During his period away from Apple, Jobs acquired Pixar, which went on to produce Toy Story, the first feature-length computer animated film in 1995. The film generated huge profits for Jobs thanks to a distribution deal with Disney. Iger joined Disney's senior management team a year later per CNBC. And as CEO, Bob Iger purchased Pixar from Jobs in 2006. And that was a great deal for Disney because Disney had lost distribution of the Pixar movies because Steve Jobs didn't like and didn't trust Michael Eisner, who was having a big dispute with Steve Jobs at Pixar over what the splits should be, what percentages and profit sharing should be between Pixar and Disney. And Steve Jobs had said that's it, he's not gonna do a deal with Disney because of Michael Eisner. Bob Iger was very opportunistic and came up with a deal where they could acquire Pixar. The board approved it over at Disney, the board approved it at Pixar and then Pixar was taken over by Disney, additionally allowing Pixar and Disney to utilize Pixar's management to save Disney's animation unit, which was being run into the ground and not doing well. Quote, when you're brought back and you agree to come back, you have to do so with unbelievable enthusiasm and not an ounce of hesitation, Iger said, and then go at it with incredible resolve, incredible zeal, and incredible energy. Since returning to the helm, Iger has announced 7,000 job cuts while Business Insider previously reported he'd ousted many of his opponents. Disney stock 
has been up 15.7% since the end of 2022, but other companies like Warner Brothers Discovery has seen their stock up, say, 50% since the end of 2022. One strange thing about this interview with Time Magazine, in addition to Bob Iger comparing himself favorably to Steve Jobs, they asked Bob Iger if he thought he could keep the company's values. And then Bob Iger made a statement about the company's core values at Disney and why he felt it was so important to maintain the company's core values over time. Here's what he said. I actually think that if you study great companies over time and you try to figure out why some companies stand the test of time and others do not, you would quickly conclude that most companies fade away because they've abandoned their core values that created the company in the first place. In the interest of staying relevant, they distance themselves from the essence of what they were. There is a way to completely adhere to those same values, but present them to the world, to your customers, and to your employees in much more relevant ways. So there's Bob Iger saying, look, you've got to keep the core values of a company if you want it to stand the test of time. All of the values that Disney has now, for example, this article from Deadline, Disney Plus greenlights German original about pregnant teen who falls in love with the devil. A pregnant teen falls in love with the devil and that's on Disney Plus. It's not even on Hulu. Hulu is general entertainment. Even so, because they're owned by Disney, you'd think they would be a little bit not as aggressive about the Satanistic content they might put on it. But that's not even for Hulu. This is for Disney, Disney Plus. Pregnant teen falls in love with the devil. And that's Bob Iger. Those are the values that Bob Iger says that they're protecting over at Disney. The main thing that you compare Bob Iger and Steve Jobs to is what was Steve Jobs' passion and vision for delivering for the consumer, and then how did he turn that into an incredible, profitable business model with hot products? When you look at Bob Iger, you say, well, how is Bob Iger doing something similar? Well, uh, let's look at this article from the Direct. Disney loses over $100 million from Chris Evans' light year. Now it's true, Bob Iger was probably not CEO at the time, did he green light this project while I was CEO? He certainly would have approved of what they did with Lightyear, putting in the woke ideas, taking it away from the successful Toy Story franchise because the Toy Story franchise, it made them tons of money at Disney. You have to wonder like, did you just keep doing the things that are successful? If you want to keep them relevant and you want to add a character in the background somewhere that plays to some of what the current social agenda is, okay, fine. But just make sure you don't damage the core brand. Nope, not for Bob Iger. That wouldn't make it relevant. Okay, so Disney loses over $100 million. From the direct, a report from Disney revealed that Chris Evans' animated spinoff Lightyear actually lost the studio a substantial amount of money at the box office. Though Disney hoped to add a new layer to the Toy Story legacy with Evans' take on Buzz Lightyear, the animated feature faced more than its fair share of issues upon its release. Immediately after the theatrical debut, Pixar's 26th movie was the subject of an unfortunate wave of review bombing because people didn't like what they were trying to do. Co-opting franchises to push their agenda. It's the same thing that Bud Light did. Disney has been getting it a lot easier than the Bud Light people. And I have a feeling the Bud Light trend of consumers just saying, listen, it's enough. We're fed up already. We're going to refuse this. We're going to tell other people not to buy this stuff. But it's interesting that they've really burned all their bridges. This is the direction that Disney has been going in, but hasn't yet paid the price for. Losing over $100 million on Buzz Lightyear is nothing. They could be losing everything with the direction they've been going in, and Bud Light seems to be just the beginning of it. Most of the reviews were complaining about a gay kiss that even got the movie banned in some countries. While Disney didn't have a waiver, including this moment, with Evans even calling those review bombers idiots, it didn't save Lightyear from coming up short of expectation. It's all about normalizing agenda. None of this stuff is organic. If it was organic, you really wouldn't notice, people wouldn't comment. Deadline revealed that Disney lost an estimated $106 million after the release of Chris Evans' Lightyear, with the film's total expenses adding up to $373 million and only earning $267 million in box office revenue. The new Pixar movie only earned $118 million domestically and $108 million internationally, which included a ban in China, a ban that Disney has seen for several other movies in the last few years. Now that Bob Iger is back at Disney, he's able to get China to take a lot of their movies. Within like a week of him being back, they were already announcing they were going to take Wakanda forever and distribute that for him, which was very nice for Bob Iger. He has very close ties 
with a communist government over in China. Will Lightyear's losses set Disney back? Disney certainly had its fair share of disappointments outside of Lightyear, even taking into account that the MCU had a few fairly successful movies. And with the company as a whole looking to make sure it puts out the best product possible, because now supposedly, according to Bob Iger, they're going to be focusing on quality instead of quantity. But what's interesting is you don't see Bob Iger and Steve Jobs would have done this. Steve Jobs will openly criticize products that are no good if they're his product. He will say if something is not good and say, hey, this isn't good, we're not gonna work on it. When he came back to Apple, one of the things he did was streamline which projects they were gonna work on and which projects they were not gonna work on. They weren't trying to be all things to all people. He got a tight control of what it was they were producing and as Jobs would say, they were trying to make everything insanely great. And then they came up with products that people could get really excited about that played into the Apple culture and were also incredibly innovative. I don't see Bob Iger doing anything near that universe of anything. You've not seen Bob Iger come out and say anything other than, oh, we need to reduce our quantity and improve our quality. But he's not being specific about it. And we know that the Bud Light vibe lives very strongly at Disney and there's no way that's gonna start to change until they have Bud Light levels of failure over at Disney. Let me know what you think of this in the comments below. Do you agree like Bob Iger is really no Steve Jobs? Do you think Bob Iger is gonna be able to turn the company around? Or do you think they're just gonna basically keep doing what they're doing, lay some more people off, and then eventually Bob Iger leaves and if no one else good comes in, the company just tanks. Let me know what you think. Always love to see your comments below. Please be sure you're subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.